So I am so excited to be here with Jana Scharfenberg. Uh, we have known each other for quite a long time, I think 2018 or so. Uh, and I am excited to hear what's been going on with you in the last, I always said three months, but now I have to look at my dates and it's actually, it is actually four months, right? It's four months since yeah. the world was turned upside down Mm -hmm. And uh, we basically couldn't leave the house and uh, a lot of people went into panic. Uh, and uh, I want to know first from you, uh, what was your initial reaction? That's a very good question because my personal world was actually turned upside down just two weeks before we uh, were, you know, facing the pandemic here in Switzerland as well, because I had my second daughter. So um, yeah, I was just coming out of the hospital and then the whole situation was changing around here in Switzerland with the lockdown. So I have to say for the first half of the year, I already planned my year pretty quiet. I planned um, when it comes to the business, I planned more on the courses are, that were running already that they just go along and i was planning that all new products and courses will start later in the year so that i can mm -hmm. enjoy a bit more um my maternity leave that was the plan yeah. but then when that the world was, was turned yeah that was the plan but then when the world was turned upside down my initial reaction was like okay we will have the situation for a few weeks now and it's not bothering me you know uh, either on a personal level or on a business level because I was prepared anyway for, for taking a break. But yeah. yeah, after after I was in that mindset for a moment and when I realized, okay, this is just not the case that we face a longer lockdown, that this will change our world basically forever, that we will probably hit a recession, all these kind of things. I was first then I was going a little bit in a nervous mode as well, like, oops, what what does that mean to my business? What will that mean for the launches I have planned for the rest of the year? And um, I think for a moment I was a bit in a, you know, frozen situation and holding on yeah. to, this is not how I planned my few months with the baby. And I was like, well, nobody in the world planned these months like that. Get yourself together. Yeah. And then basically I switched around my whole plan for the year and yeah just basically went with the flow and changed things and um, also had a big, big focus on what do my current clients need? How can I support them? Because my target group, the people I work with, health experts, um, most of them, not the ones who work in, in hospitals, but all of the others who have yoga studios or private practices, they were all shut down. And for them, it was a very, very severe situation. So on one yes. hand, it was like shifting the whole strategy for the rest of the year. And then how can I support my existing clients the best way right now? Because I have all the knowledge about how to work online. I've done that for years. How can I serve you now the best that you can somehow survive in that crazy time? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that, uh, that everybody's plans were upside down and people start to make jokes about, <laughs> did you buy a planner? <laughs> like, <laughs> that was a joke like, who has a 2020 planner? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what, what did you do with your existing clients? Did you feel there was any panic? You know, those who have their own studios, uh, how did they react to it? Like, how could you support them? Well, I think, you know, they all went through their own personal phases with it, like being in shock, being frozen, being like, what shall I do now? Will I survive this? And then, I mean, as you see, probably in, in every group, you have people who react pretty fast, who adapt yeah. to the situation. You have some who stay frozen and some who's, uh, who uh, get more to the denial part. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, it was the first point listening, what's going on, who's in what situation and how can I help those people? And I was basically providing them, you know, the information, how to work online, how to teach yoga classes online, how to, um, if you have one-on-one -on -one clients when you're a therapist, how you, where can you do that? How is you know all the privacy policy around this? So all these kind of things, and it was for me more okay, hands-on, go in the group, offering the free service that they can email us anytime. That my team is there to take phone calls if needed, having extra webinars, 
just showing support and then also being so pragmatic to say, where do you need the help? Okay, you can do it this way. You can just buy that light. You can just use your iPhone or whatever. These practical tips to get them out of these pros and motos and say, look, there are options and you can do it. And what I found so interesting that a lot of my clients, they were saying for months, not even years, oh, I wish I could do that online, maybe one day. And then it was like, now I have the knowledge. Now I have the urge to do it. Go for it. And most of them did amazing. And I think in the end it was, yeah, having this, creating the community we already had, but creating it even on a deeper level, more on, even more on the serving level and even more on, okay, what do you need right now? And also in the courses I run at the moment, we basically for one month, we, we took a break that they could, you know, that they can take their time. We were focusing purely on how they get their things online. And then we're going back to our normal modules because we also have a lot of um, women or men who have families who were in home office and they were just all overwhelmed. We were like, okay, we do the best we can to support you, to take the mental load (laughs) off you. And yeah, most of them appreciated a lot. And I think um, even if I'm not a business coach, I think a lot of businesses got born out of that or new variations or components to the existing businesses. And it was very interesting to see. Yeah, uh, it's interesting how people react differently mm-hmm. to uh, a crisis like this. Like you said, uh, yeah. frozen, don't do anything. Uh, going to Nile and, well, still don't do anything, but it's a different way. Yeah. And then the action takers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you would definitely fall in the category of the action takers, even if you were planning to take a break yourself. Yes, I mean, I was planning for the break, but, you know, in the end, it's always with life just what what is life giving us and what can we do with it and i um decided for myself you know still have my time off but reduce it a little bit and also not only support my existing clients but also yeah redo my strategy i had for the year so we basically went two months earlier in a launch than we would have planned yeah first of all to see you know what uh, what is going on do people still buy do they need something different how can what can we you know um bring into the existing programs to serve them better how do we have to rework them and yeah so i, I was more like okay we try and see and when we have tried that then we can make you know the big plan what we do the ne- uh, rest of the year and it was interesting right. because i totally expected mm-hmm. that my target group would not be able to um, invest in themselves and further education in, in holistic health this year, but it kind of exploded. Yeah. I mean, we have yeah. sign ups right now. We did, didn't have ever before without running any ads, without doing any, you know, fancy strategy in, in launching, but purely by being there, listening, and of course, adding the modules or the knowledge they need now. Yeah. 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 So you were planning to launch as of, you know, August or? No, October. <laughs> yeah. Well, in October, in October the program in October, starts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So in October, the program would have started. It still starts in October. And yes, you're right. I would have planned to start in August, but now yeah. we started in April and yeah. we added like a whole new layer on the course, which is teaching business things and online things. So yeah. that the people who will um, be in the program in October, they can already start now to work on that because this is what is needed now. And people loved it so much that they already can do something that we were thinking about these things that they already in our community, that they can already be, you know, part of the community, reach out if they need something and yeah, add this layer to to the existing stuff. And yeah, instead of August, it was April. (laughs) Yeah. But that's being a true entrepreneur. So you basically added a new element to your mm-hmm. program uh, that they can work on. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, this year. Um, and uh, your financial goals, they have completely changed, right? Yes. You know, I was, I was thinking for this year, if I stick with uh, <laughs> the goals I had last year and basically, you know, Stay even that would be amazing because uh, yeah I really want to have a break with the baby that was my plan 
And yeah. the plan shifted when I saw, okay, everything kind of exploded. People need more help. We can serve them. We have the knowledge. Uh, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, then we really go for it. Then we invite those people in and also see who, um, how we can serve them with other parts, like uh, smaller programs or um, yeah, coaching and, and things like that. And I have to say, yes, my financial goal shifted with that. It was more observing what is possible right now. But it's still in the combination with how much can I serve, of course, and how can I do that with still having the initial break a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> you went away also uh, in the beginning to do mm -hmm. uh, South of Germany. Um, yeah. You were a little bit away from the hectical, well, hectical. Everybody was locked inside. Instead of being locked inside an apartment, you could actually be in a garden. So I, I, I think... That is helpful, right? That you have that as well, personally. Yes, yes. It was amazing for us um, because, you, you know, we live in the middle of Zurich. And when we heard about the lockdown and we have two small children, we were like, how shall we do that? And then we decided pretty spontaneously to go, as you said, to uh, Bavaria, to the southern part of uh, Germany, where my parents live. They have, I mean, the joke in our family is that they always have lockdown and isolation because in their tiny village, they're like 10 people or something like that. But yeah. it was truly amazing also to see, you know, this um, change of scenery, how much it also helps you with changing the strategy or the plans you had for the year. Because I never yeah. would have planned to stay two months with my parents. But being there, being so much in nature and, you know, everything around you is shifting so much, it helps a lot with shifting yourself as well and adapting and yeah letting new ideas in it was it was a very good support yeah yeah so you always have goals for how many uh spots you want to sell into your long-term program uh where are you right now um right now i think we are close to 90 people mm -hmm. in the course yeah that's where nice. we are right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for a year long program. Yeah. For a year long program that starts in October. That sounds mm -hmm. a bit crazy. It's a year long program <laughs> starts in October and you already have 90 uh, participants. Uh, mm -hmm. This is like a, a unique opportunity that you also saw instead of saying, okay, I'm stick to all, my old plan of taking a break is that everyone wants to go online and online education is in many uh, countries, I would say the only option, really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, uh, that, yeah. And also, you know, what I would have not expected or would I, what I haven't seen is um, when my team and I, when we had strategy calls and when we asked people, why do you sign up for this now? That a lot of them also yeah. said, listen, I plan for another training this year, but everything that's offline is either canceled or taken online. And I'm unsure... And then I want to go to the expert who's already doing that for years. There I feel more comfortable with. And I was like, ah, okay. I, I would have never expected that as well, right? That this is an argument yeah. for people. But I mean, it's super logical. I would do the same, right? Go to the expert in that field. Yeah. But with your program also comes a live event. And what are your plans around that? Because there has been a lot of people have, some people have not, kind of started to uh, cancel events in the fall, but others have, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So the event was planned for the end of September. And I, at the beginning, I really was calling you with the event because I just love it so much being offline and hugging the people and seeing them. But I mean, I'm also somebody who is very proactive. You know, I don't want to change something last minute or put people yeah in a position where they have to see for themselves can i go there or not how shall we do that so i was like as soon as we um open the program we also have to make a decision what we do with this event and we said okay this year we won't have any live events even if it's in the fall or in the winter time we don't know what's coming and i don't want to put anybody you know in danger when it comes to their health um yeah. And I also want to have a, a great life experience. I don't see, you know, my clients being there with masks, uh, practicing yoga, or we can only let half of the people in or something like that. And then we were like, instead of, you know, every day waking up and using the energy to think, can we do it? Can we do it not? What is, you know, what is the, the state saying right now? I said, we have to channel this energy and 
take this event online as well, but make it the best experience ever and take all our focus on that, that it's not a Zoom event where you're sitting eight hours staring at your laptop, but how can we do it that people still practice yoga, that they cook together, that they have, um, you know, an upper row together and all these kind of things. And now I have, I also engaged a new team member to purely focusing on planning an amazing life event. So it's not a copy of the offline event and we just, you know, take it online, but to create yeah. a true, truly amazing experience out of that. So mm. yes, we do that right now. And um, the idea for offline events, they all push to the next year until we know more. And then we will focus on creating an amazing um, yeah, experience for that as well. Yeah. I think that's a, a wise decision to uh, uh, do it so early, to decide. So we've done the same thing. You know, uh, yeah. my event, Signal Life, is, is also going to be online this year. And yeah. I took that decision already a few months ago. Um, I think uh, a hope strategy is not a good strategy. <laughs> it's a, no, it's better never. to be safe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what do you see happening? Like, you know, you both for your business, uh, we know we don't go back to normal. Things will not be the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see for your clients, but also for your business going to be the new normal or next normal? I think when it comes to my clients, um, the next normal would be, would be or is to be more open to online options. I already have a lot of clients like yoga teachers, doctors, therapists who have online components. But in this kind of field, there's also a big mindset of the true work I can only do offline or most of it should be done offline or how should that even work online, wherever the person yeah. comes from. And I think this wall is torn down <laughs> now because yeah. they, people have to face these options. And we saw a lot is possible. Yeah. A lot of is possible to do online and people like it, they enjoy it, it serves them. And for a lot of clientele, this will be even the better option to do that. So I think for my clients, it's being more open to that and having now inspirational leaders who show them how it's done. Um, mm -hmm. this, this is when it comes to my clients. And I think for my own business, it's like, do what I've already done the years before make it even better and integrate the online component when it comes to teaching other people how they can take their health services online, integrate that even more. Because before I saw it as something optional, they can yeah. learn in the trainings. And now I I really see it mandatory that everybody, I, I wish that every health expert has the knowledge that they can take parts of the business online to be prepared and to serve their patients because in this whole crisis situation, it's also a health crisis. And we should not forget that, that yes, there's a pandemic, but there are also other people who face severe health issues and who maybe sit at home now and they truly, truly need their help. And we can only reach out to them when we, or when doctors and um, health experts know how to do that online. So yeah, I think there is a huge shift and I'm pretty excited to see what will happen in the next month, in the next years. and how I can bring my expertise into that and um, help my fellow health experts to, to thrive in that. Yeah. But we haven't just had a pandemic that forced us to be at home. Uh, you know, following that is a recession. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think we've seen the worst of it. Uh, my guess is that the fall is going to bring out more people that will lose their job or stop getting benefits and things like that. So it hasn't really hit yet. Um, but also there's been a social justice movement, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what, what's your take on, 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 on those things and how they've played in, have you done something differently in your business because of the other parts happening, you know, besides health and, and lockdown? Mm -hmm. So you mean specifically when it comes to social justice? issues or well, overall yeah, the combination yeah is, there any, yeah is there any way you have maybe changed your content or the way you speak or something some kind of a wake-up call around uh yeah the other things that the pandemic mm -hmm. has brought us yeah i think it's what i find, find interesting and i think there i 
I'm still working on stepping up more is that with the pandemic and also with like Life Matters uh, movement and things like that, um, I, I see, you know, that we're all at a turning point right now. We have to decide if we stay quiet and just go like, oh, this is my business. This has nothing to do with that and just go on. Or if we say, mm. okay, there's so many things happening in the world and there's all somehow intertwined. I think, you know, yes, Black Lives Matters would have come up anyway, but I think the pandemic probably put even more emotion in it, even more awareness because so many people were at home and were able to look at these things and, you know, think about these things. And that's amazing that that happened. But I think if you want to understand yourself as a leader, even if it's in the health department or it's in a totally different industry, you still have to keep these things in mind and see what does that mean for my industry? How can I make a change there as well? Instead of saying, I'm only working with yoga teachers or I'm only doing Ayurveda and this is not my field and I want to stay neutral because I think the pandemic and the movement and all these things, they show us there is no neutral. <laughs> There's either stepping up being a leader or you know hiding somewhere and probably be forgotten over time and not really making a change in the world. And it, it took me a while to understand for myself where I stand in this thing, but you yeah. know, I didn't become an entrepreneur. I didn't, you know, create this company to be neutral. I created it to make a change. And change is not stopping when I say, okay, people are more healthy because they step more on the yoga mat. The change is there when I look at the other components as well. And yes, I have my platforms. I have my community where I can, my followers where I can, you know, maybe make an impact or at least make them think about something. So. I personally want to use it and I want to use it more. I want to educate myself more about these things because of course everybody's having their blind spots and I have certainly mine too. So I have to educate mm -hmm. myself more on that, but I also want to share it. And I also want to invite my community to not say, oh, you know, we are all good because we're teaching yoga or we're all good because we're medical doctors. No, we all mm -hmm. have to face it. And I want, I, I want to see myself as a leader in the whole variety of my business and not only in that small part yeah but coming to that small part which is not a small part you also want the health, <laughs> health revolution uh, yes what what does that look like the health revolution so the health revolution is basically the thing is why i started to be self-employed, why I started a company. Um, my vision is always how can people live more healthy? How can they, you know, get the knowledge and make simple changes? And um, I see so many programs where, yes, there is so much knowledge in that inside, but taking action is the part which is missing. And this is what mm -hmm. we need. So mm -hmm. I'm focusing more and more on how we can take action. How can I integrate the both worlds, like from offline, you know, the very conventional way how our healthcare system is working into an online system. How can these two worlds be blended and combined so that, that um, health experts have better circumstances, how they work, but also clients and patients that they have, you know, um, that they can just open their laptop and speak to a health expert in my in my programs and things like that. And I think it's getting even more important in these kind of days where it's mm -hmm. not normal anymore that I leave my house to go, um, yeah, to see my nutritionist or, you know, to fly somewhere for a retreat and things like that. We all need these, um, these strategies for ourselves, the knowledge for ourselves to create health from within that we can basically make the world a, a healthier place. Mm, yeah. So healthier place, but also wealthier for women. We have talked about this, yeah. you know, online and offline, that this issue that women don't talk about money, they don't talk about wealth, uh, and they don't even try to make a lot of money. And I would definitely think, uh, and I know it from working with yoga teachers and, and people who are in the wellness uh, industry, mm -hmm. it is a, almost like a pandemic <laughs> in a different way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> where, where uh, you know, and we need to find a vaccine, uh, uh, where <laughs> it is women, unfortunately, that are also, you know, 
losing out both during the pandemic, but even long before that. Uh, mm -hmm. Typically, it's women who want to help. It's typically women that go into wellness and health. Uh, and and then they also, even if they're self-employed, they charge too little. And, uh, you know, uh, they don't uh, achieve that independence. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, what has brought you to talk more about, you know, how much money you make or something? Is mm -hmm. that related to that, trying to inspire women to possibly change the way they're thinking about this? Well, as you said in the beginning, we know each other for a few years now, and I think when somebody, when a woman is in your surrounding or is working with you, you cannot not think about that. <laughs> so that's probably one part. But for me, I mean, all the things you said, I can totally relate to them, you know, because I was one of them. I was like, I cannot charge for that. I don't talk about money and stuff like that. And um, But the more I'm evolving with my business the more i grow with my business and the more yes money my business generates the more i also understand the energy of the money and how important it is to talk mm -hmm. about these things and i had one aha moment and that was basically actually last year when we were together on a, a mastermind retreat and you talked mm -hmm. about that you're looking for female speakers for your wonderful summit and that there are not so many women in europe who make a million dollars yeah and how can that be and i was like Oh my God, yeah, that's so true. And then we talked about how it's not about the million dollars, it's more about the impact and being an inspiration, things like that. And there what that was really, you know, a changing point for me because it was like, yes, it's amazing to earn money. Yes, it's amazing to, you know, build your company. But it's more about the impact and showing women what's possible. And um, for me, it's showing women. And also, of course, health experts, because there is a huge mindset thing. Don't yeah. charge, don't talk about money. I mean, once you enter university and, you know, and study something around health, from day one, this is the sentence you believe. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it, and I think it kind of opened the door for me, right? To see myself more in that role and also see how much inspiration you can bring to others, how much hope you can bring to others, how much change. And also um, having this thing, if, if you earn a lot of money, it doesn't mean you sit at home and count your money. It means the money can go back, right? And mm -hmm. this is something people, when they hear, oh, she's having a million dollar business, that people don't see or don't follow through. That it's not mm -hmm. that you or me, that we're sitting at home counting the money and thinking how many more shoes or things we can buy. It's more like, how can I give back? What can I do with the money? And this is something, especially for, or it's for example, in the pandemic, if you have money, then yes, you can give it back. And in the pandemic, we had so many clients who couldn't afford their bills, who, you know, couldn't fill the fridge, things like that happen in Switzerland as well. And there it's so easy to say, I can help you. I can support with you. What do you need when the money is there? But if the money is not there, how do you want to support others? And yeah. This is what brought me to talking more about money, sharing my numbers, saying what I want to achieve, uh, and not holding back. It took me a while to get there. It probably still yeah. does. <laughs> yeah. But I can. But I yes, as you said, it's also for me a part of the leadership component to yeah. share these things as well, and not saying, "Oh, I'm a nice doctor, and yes, you know, I'm successful with uh, selling courses," but uh, walking people through what that actually means on all levels. Mm. Yeah. And, and and do you see uh, what's happening right now as like a wake up call? You know, we talked about health and wealth. Uh, I heard of less academic papers being published by women during the pandemic. And like it was just another element of uh, how we have not achieved enough equality and mm -hmm. possibly why leadership is even more important than ever before. It's an interesting question because yes, I saw that as well. Less uh, papers got published. You can see, uh, I mean, in, ho in the whole home office thing and, and stuff like that, women are more at home. Women also, you know, in the online communities, you can observe it so much that more women tend to say, I push my launch to na next year or something like that, where the men are more like, okay, we launch now. <laughs> yeah. Also very interesting. Um, I'm not sure if it's a wake up call, 
or if it's a symptom we have for a for I, I would call for a big uh, inequality disease, which we have a pandemic, we could also sort of call it. Um, if it's, you know, a symptom which is showing itself very severe now, and it's up to us, do we treat it now or not? And I'm a bit afraid that it's not treated now, that it mm -hmm. won't be treated, that people are more like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, that's how it is. Okay, now we try to go back to normal and then it's kind of covered again. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? I'm not yeah. sure which way it will go. So I'm not sure if it's a wake up call, but for me, when I talk it in the medical way, it's a symptom showing itself very severe. And as always in medicine, we can either tr treat it from yeah. the root or we can try to cover it. Let's see where it goes. Yeah. The way I just, just earlier today, uh, because uh, we are starting a new process where I kick people in the butt and <laughs> get them to, to take action. <laughs> Uh, there was a woman who said she was pregnant and, uh, you know, I am not, you know, I'm not a biological mother. I have two stepchildren, but I was like, you can still do it. Like, you know, women, let's, it's, pregnancy is not a disease. Uh, yes, you get a, some, uh, some have this throw up feeling for uh, some months, but um, it should not stop women to do the things, you know, uh, you've been pregnant uh, and having a baby, building your business mm -hmm. and, uh, th that's why I'm treating it. I'm gonna not allow women to have excuses. So that's one way and showing leadership, mm -hmm. like you said, So we got to treat it. So from yeah. a medical side and, and, and from role model side, I guess that's the way to yeah. do it. And yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Jana, it's been wonderful to catch up and hear what you've been doing in the last four months. I'm still training yeah. four months. It's not three months anymore. It's time flies. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, absolutely and, uh, it's, it's it's not over as i said before we we still have a pandemic yeah. uh uh and uh recession and uh social justice this is all just starting out and i think it's important and that's why i'm doing these interviews to inspire mm -hmm. people to take action uh, to make sure they have a thriving business yeah. uh just like yours and yana i have no doubt that you will reach your million dollar gold yes i'm already excited about <laughs> thank you <laughs> so uh you will be getting one of those oh my god now i will even try harder <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for having before, me here thank you <laughs> <laughs> two years before i achieved my goal i put the perfume on my desk it's not about the perfume as you said no. it's all yeah. not about the money uh, it yeah. is a symbol for uh, what we can do as women. And Jana, yeah. uh, thank you for being the role model you are. Thank you for showing up and doing your amazing work and yeah, changing the world for us women here. Thank you so much. <laughs>